Hello again, everybody. It is Takedown Media. I'm Scott Casper, Nike Hot Seat's very special guest today. They call him affectionately Timmy Midlands. He joins us now, the former and longtime head coach at Northwestern, the former University of Iowa star, and the star of the Midlands on the mat in the early 70s throughout the late 70s. As a matter of fact, Tim Szeski joins us. Tim, how are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. So the, uh, the Midlands really has become even more so today than in years past, I think, your baby. This is the event that you work so hard to to assemble. You have a, a, a record number of athletes coming in this year, or what could be a record, uh, over 400. Let's talk a bit about the 2015 Ken Craft Championships, Midlands Championships. Well, it's going to be the, the biggest and baddest ever, I'll tell you. It's, it's definitely full, we'll have over 400 entries. Um, teams like Arizona State, Oregon State, Northern Iowa are going to be back uh, at full strength. Uh, you know, so lot, nine out of nine, nine out of uh, fourteen Big Ten teams will be here in full strength. Uh, um, Iowa State's going to be here, so it's um, you know it definitely is a, a, a solid tournament. And it's one of those kind of tournaments that, as usual, you want to have on your belt buckle when you or have it notched off on your belt when you end your career. When you started going to the Midlands as a competitor, you'd heard about this this tournament in, in at the time held in Lagrange. Am I right? Right in Lagrange High School. Yeah. When you heard about it, um, t- tell people where you were at that point. Where were you when you heard about it? Well, I, w- I was growing up in the, in the Chicago suburbs, and we heard about this tournament in Lagrange High School, and it was all these college guys were going to be down there, and we knew a lot about Gable and. Uh, Taylor and all these guys, uh, and uh, we said, "Hey, let's go down there and check it out after after a practice." And uh, so we got in the car, and I just got my license, so we just got in the car, it's a straight shot down 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 Interstate two ninety four, about a twenty minute twenty mile drive. Got there, wrestled, watched the wrestling all day. We we're just like, "Wow, this is cool," you know. And uh, at that time, they had the main gym was. Uh, that had a six mats in the main gym and had a smaller gym uh, uh, in a different area of the uh, of the school that they had two other mats where they had the smaller weights wrestled, the 118s and 126 pounders. So Milkovich was there and a few other you know um, guys we read about. So I always wanted to see you know what the little guys looked like. They you know sized myself up even though I was a sophomore in high school. Kind of just kind of kind of scouting uh, scouting things out a little bit, see where I would fit. And, and we just watched that, and it was kind of amazing that you saw you guys wrestling. And said, "Hey, I can, I think I can hang with these because I, Mark Mastery was wrestling in it, and I I knew Matt, Mark at that point too, and uh, so I said that'd be kind of cool wrestling this tournament one of these days. And then, you know, as I was watching the tournament with my my our buddies, we kind of think, well, it'd be kind of cool wrestling it. Wouldn't it be cool maybe placing it, and then you know maybe maybe cool being be in the finals and win it, you know, and." Uh, and uh, I've been involved in the Midlands ever since, you know, somehow from a competitor standpoint and a uh, coach and an administrator. So it's been, you know, uh, a great, uh, great uh, time uh, spending with the Midlands. Midlands talk to, talk to us about the evolution of the Midlands, because there used to be uh, back in the day when when you surely when you were wrestling in the event where you see what you would see collegiate, uh, you would see some. Uh, uh, you know, high school guys and some uh, Olympic level. I mean, it really was a, a sprinkling of some of the greatest of the greats, and it's evolved, sure. hasn't it? Sure. I mean, it went it went from uh, you know a tournament where it's it more of a, you had high college guys in it. You had uh, a lot of open kids in it. A lot of guys who wrestle for clubs because at, at that time you didn't have a lot of um, competition, international competition, competition that time of year. You know, we would go to Cerro Palato and, and Tbilisi, but that was later in, in January, February. And we, internationally, that's a lot of guys wanted to do more and just keep their competition um, intensity up. So they would come to the Midlands. And, you know, we had world champs and world team members never place, I mean, never win the Midlands. It was that tough. Um, at the same time, uh, we had a lot of high school, we had, didn't enter, didn't allow, at that time, didn't allow a lot of high school age group kids in there. They had to go through a special uh, procedure. Um, but guys like uh, Jimmy Carr, uh, Colot, you know, all wrestled in the Midlands and placed in it or, or won it. Um, so they kind of made, put their name on the, on the big stage and also it just kind of made Midlands look d- totally different than anybody else. Now there's there been some rule changes in the NSA. They don't allow high school kids to wrestle in Midlands anymore or any open tournaments like that. Internationally, there's a lot more 
event for the international guys who wrestle in. So it's become more pretty much just a, a collegiate uh, uh, Division One uh, uh, tournament. We saw some. Uh, if you look back historically on the Midlands and the and those that wrestled at least in the top six in their weights, we see some um, uh, teams that are no longer. Uh, mean Machine Wrestling Club, for example, that was Wade Chalice's uh, club. Uh, Portland State, um, uh, Kentucky, uh, and I'm just naming off a few uh, right. that that wrestled in this event over the years that are actually no longer. So we're starting to see some programs, Marquette, uh, for example. Uh, we're starting to see some programs come back uh, in various places. As a matter of fact, um, there's some news out there that perhaps Tulane might be uh, considering a wrestling program. It gives us a little bit of, <coughs> pardon me, it gives, <coughs> get all choked up thinking about it. Yeah. It gives us a little bit of pause to think about where wrestling was, where it is, and where it can be. And historically, there's some great guys attached to those names as well. Yeah, I mean, there's, everybody's got their story about where they were, how, you know, they wrestled in Midlands, and, you know, I always put Midlands as one of those um, three things you want to win in, in, in collegiate wrestling. You want to win your NCAA title, you want to win your conference championship, like the Big Tens, and you want to win the Midlands. So should your, you know, uh, three uh, three jewels of wrestling, in my mind, you want to have, like Triple Crown rest, and, and, and triple crown of Wrestling, you know, like Triple Crown in, in uh, horse racing. I, that's the way I look at it. And uh, there's a lot of guys out there that haven't done that. And a lot of guys have, you know, are trying to do that. I was talking with Chuck Yagla earlier this morning and assembling a, a radio show that will be coming up to uh, an episode of Takedown. And it's going to be kind of a legend show. And um, I said, who, Chuck, who, if you were in my shoes, putting together a legend show, you can only have about six guests. And I said, who would be one of those? He said, well, another Midland great would be Pete Gallia. Sure. And uh, then I got to thinking about Pete, and then I thought about Lee Kemp. Right. And some of those names that, uh, you know, cross those mats at, a, at an exceedingly cool uh, gym, I think. It's probably one of my favorite places to work, uh, and that's uh, Welsh Ryan Arena. So there's a lot of romance attached to Welsh Ryan Arena, uh, the names, of course. Who are some of the teams that are going to be competing this year? Obviously, you've been working hard on this. They've got to be front and center in your mind. Who are some of the teams that will be in competition? Well, like, for example, we got um, uh, Arizona State, like I mentioned, is coming full force. They haven't been in the Midlands for a number of years, and they're back now, and they're looking to have a great tournament. Uh, Iowa State's back. Uh, Northern Iowa's back. Iowa, of course. Um, like I said, we got nine out of 14 Big Ten teams coming in. Rutgers is coming in full team. Maryland's full team. You know, uh, Indiana, Purdue, Wisconsin, Northwestern. Um, you know, so it's, it's if you want to see some good wrestling or some great wrestling, not just good wrestling, that, the 29th to 30th of, of December, that's where you want to be here at Northwestern. We just saw Rutgers, um, and perhaps this is the emergence of a program. Uh, we just saw Rutgers have a, a tremendous weekend at uh, the Grapple at the Garden in New York City. Uh, it was, uh, you know, what some believe, uh, the, you know, the product moving moving into the Big Ten. What's your take on Rutgers? Well, I think they, they, they've definitely benefited being in the Big Ten Conference. I think, you know, it shows you that um, we have 14 schools in the Big Ten. They're all very strong schools. Um, and I, I think... Um, because of being in the Big Ten, it's helped them recruiting. I think their administration realizes this is a kind of a team that you can have some success uh, within the Big Ten and, and right away if, if you do it right. And they're, and they're doing it right. Talk about the uh, – I'm going to go back historically now, okay? Sure. Uh, if, if, we, if we can. I don't want to take you too far back. <laughs> but I do want to talk about uh, – uh, 134 pounds, making the move from 126 to 134. Uh, was it a size issue? Was it height? Why did you move from 26 to 34? Uh, and some would believe that to be a, a, a small move, but for many, it's actually monumental. It's an eight-pound spread. Yeah, I mean, my my junior year in college was a tough year. I, I, I won the Midlands that year as a junior uh, at 126. And my goal, I don't know why, I had my mindset, I was going to be 126 pounder all four years in college. And um, my junior year, it was tough to get the weight down. I was just, I had a growth spurt. I grew a little bit, matured a little bit physically. Um, and I was just having a difficult time getting my, keep my weight down. And, um, 
uh, I did, and, and and fortunately, I best probably wrestled my best matches uh, at the Midlands tournament that year. I just had a down spiral as it goes. My, you know, I just wasn't able to keep my weight where I wanted it to be, and uh, I just made a mind my mind up and said, "Hey, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm going 134 from now on, and heck with it." You know, and uh, probably the best decision of my life because uh, I had m- the most successes consistent successes when I started wrestling 134 and then internationally 136 and a half. So it, it, it was a more of a physical situation where I was a late bloomer physically in it. And, and, uh, and it's something I had to do. We're talking with Tim Sazeski and, and those final years of your competition at the Midlands, you faced some tough cats. Uh, and it was a 134 pound weight class that was just stacked. Randy Lewis, Tim Szeski, Nikki Gallo, uh, Frankie DeAngelis, uh, Kevin Puebla, uh, Steve Carr. I mean, that this look at this weight class and the names that were there with you, the athletes. I mean, Nick Gallo had the time of the fastest fall that year, if you recall, right. uh, at 134 pounds. It was 29 seconds. Now, there, there are some faster falls in Midlands history, of course. There's 12. I think there's an eight-second fall, if, if memory serves. But some absolute uh, performers at all weight classes. But 34 that year was particularly stacked. You were wrestling for the Hawkeye Wrestling Club at the time. Right. Lewis was with Iowa. Right. Uh, Gallo was New York AC. DeAngelis, Oklahoma. Illini Wrestling Club was Kevin. And right. then, of course, Steve Carr with Iowa State. Um, that, that year, and I'm talking about 1979, was your final year, right? Right. Why did you choose at that point to step away from the Midlands competitively? Well, it was kind of what, yeah, I had certain goals in my mind and, and it, it was kind of funny and things were working just the way it was. And I was going into that mat into that, that year saying, okay, if I can win this thing, I'll tie Gable's win record. I believe in consecutive wins. He had six, six years straight. He won it or something like that. And I figured that'd oh, be kind of cool to tie it, you know? And then, uh, so I, I knew what the tournament was going to look like, and I always felt pretty good about how I, you know, had a pretty good background doing all pretty well in the tournament. So, you know, just wrestled one match at a time, got myself into the finals. Randy and I wrestled each other, and, you know, he beat me, I think it was a pretty close match, four to two. And the kind of funny thing is I beat him the week and a half earlier at, at the Northern Iowa Open in the finals. Um and then, uh, he, you know, he turned the table on me at the, at the Midlands Finals. And, you know, he and I worked out a lot together, so we knew each other. So it was just one of those things, you know. And uh, so I won it five times and was in the final six times. You know, not too bad. No, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, not too bad at all. All right, so the evolution of Tim Szeski continued over the years, becoming a coach. And uh, I think, uh, was it 81 when your first year? Yeah, 81 was my first year uh, now you know, just you know, helping out running that with Ken Kraft. Tom John was the coach at that time. Jack Lease was administrator there. Um, so just kind of learning you know, the ropes of how to run this kind of thing. I run, helped run tournaments before, but Midlands was totally a different animal you know, and how it was set up, how it was run to begin with. And um, you, know, you always knew it was a different kind of tournament, the prestige of it. And you know, now from an administrating standpoint, I'm help running it, okay – what's the what's the you know what's the deal is so you know over the years you just add to it you know from getting mats to helping out with programs to tickets to you know hiring the officials to you know tearing things back down again setting things back up again um but we have a a very good group of volunteers that help help do all that um i think the biggest thing we changed here for northwestern is that when i first came in most of the wrestlers worked it. I mean, they helped set it up, tear it down, run the tables if they weren't wrestling in it. And I told the coach at that time, at least I mentioned the coach at that time, I said, hey, if these guys want to wrestle in the Midlands, they can't have that kind of experience. They got to come in here knowing that it's their tournament, but that their tournament to win and, 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 and the wrestling, not to work in it and, and do everything from, you know, mopping the mats to, you know, putting them back down in the wrestling room. So we made a change and said we're going to get all you know volunteer help to help do all that stuff so our guys can get ready on just doing well in the midlands and i think that's the probably the biggest change we made um from that standpoint midlands has been great guys looking forward to wrestling it now uh knowing that they don't have to you know the guys nowadays don't realize what what the older guys used to have to do 
Well, the seeds have been announced, and the Ken Craft Midlands will take place coming up uh, on the 29th and 30th of December, a unique time of the week this year, Tuesday and, and Wednesday. We're looking forward to broadcasting it this year. Uh, Brandon Preeson bro- uh, joins our broadcast crew as we salute the career that he just announced that he will be retiring from. And uh, what better way to do it than with us uh, for two big days? Tim Szeski has been our guest on the Nike Hot Seat today. And uh, we, we, we affectionately call him uh, Timmy Midlands because he's been there for so long, as has Jack and Ken. And the Ken Craft Midlands will take place at Northwestern University on the campus of and in a venerable arena. We call it because we respect it. It is venerable indeed. Welsh Ryan. Uh, Tim, we can send him to the website nusports.com. Uh, for more information and look for the Midlands, uh, 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 what do you call it, clicker at the top, the button. Right. Click on that right. for more information. Tickets are always available for uh, viewers, and that's perhaps the best gift we can give over the holidays as an opportunity to see uh, those kids wrestle and, and uh, what, what talent there is. I can't, yeah. I can't thank you enough for your stewardship uh, well, for thanks. the event. Uh, just a little note that the finals will be televised on Big Ten Network at 8 o'clock. This year, so again, the Big Ten Network will be uh, will be picking it up. I love it. I love it. Big Ten Network uh, delivering yet again another great event. Tim, thanks for the time. Our best to uh, Storniello and the boys, uh, everybody at uh, Northwestern for all they do for this event and for the sport. And we do appreciate your time today. Great, thank you. For all of us at Takedown, a very special opportunity to go one-on-one with Tim Szeski. Over the years, we've done it many times, but the most recent was today, and we appreciate that. I'm Scott Casper. Thanks for watching.